breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. All right, everyone, welcome back to this week's episode of Brainstorming with the Docs. I'm Dr. Colby Condos, my co-host, Dr. Glenn Harrison. What's up, buddy? Hey, I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. I'm, uh, you know, going to the podcast this evening, I was like, wow, oh, I don't know if I feel like it. I'm kind of tired. It was a long day. And uh, I was like, hmm, I was actually feeling a little bit, you know, a little, you know, I wasn't sticking to my goals. And I know we talked about this before, but then I realized I was stubborn enough to make it. My oh, wife. yeah. I'm super stubborn. Ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so that might not be the good stubborn. No, that might not be probably the Probably not. <laughs> so today we are actually talking about the importance of being stubborn and persevering in some of the most common chronic health conditions that we talk about and that we see in our office. Um, if this is your first time watching or listening to the podcast or telecast, um, hit like and subscribe, turn on notifications because we're going to continue to talk about important things within health that may be affecting you or your loved ones. And you never know when we might cover something that will benefit and help you. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that we see or, or how's this? Let me frame it this way. Why is it important to be stubborn when it comes to your health? Yeah. Who would have ever thought being stubborn is, is, is one of the key pieces to, to, um, to becoming healthy or to staying healthy. Yeah. I, I think being, being stubborn is, um, you know, is, is includes a set of principles that you aren't going to bend on. It's just the way it is. It, it, it doesn't matter what distraction or who tries to pull you out of it. You're going to be so stubborn. You're going to hold your ground. And um, I, I think that's to simplify it. I think that's why. I would agree with that. I think that a lot of times we forget, um, especially when we're sick, right? And we see this a lot. When you're in misery and you've been stuck there for so long, you think that nothing's going to work. But in all actuality, a lot of these conditions that people are, suffer from aren't things that happened overnight. So it's not like you woke up one day and had diabetes. It's not like you woke up one day and you had you know, whatever, adrenal fatigue or adrenal insufficiency or whatever, take your pick. So I think that we kind of have a short term memory because it doesn't seem like we got there, you know, slowly, but in all actuality, we did. Um, so it takes years for this stuff to happen, um, months to years, and it's going to take a long time for this to improve. So that's when the mental fortitude and the stubbornness comes in is because it's going to take a lot of diligent focused effort to get out of the place that you're in. And then you are going to have a lot of distractions and everything else along the way. So you really have got to be stubborn and you've got to be unwilling to deviate from your path. Once that plan is laid out for you and you have a plan of action, you've got to just be incredibly diligent. You got to be super stubborn. You got to stick to it and you have to stick to it even when you aren't seeing immediate results. Exactly. You have to, you have to be, you have to hold on to your belief system. You have to hold on to, because again, it's not going to be a day or a week or even a month that you're going to see a change. So you, you have to be willing to, to stick with it. And that, that stubbornness is, is a, is a big thing until you see change and then you still got to stick with it. So I think the stubbornness, stubbornness, if we use that is required to be able to, um, to, to maintain, to maintain your health because you stick to your principles, but also to, to, to change your health, to change your physiology, because you have to, you have to ride that wave for long enough, uh, avoiding every distraction to get to the other side. Absolutely. I mean, a perfect example of this, and I'll use myself as an example. Um, so as you know, I, I have celiac disease and then I also am lactose intolerant, so I can't have dairy or wheat or gluten or anything mm -hmm. like that. Right. And for I cannot even tell you how long where I would just kind of half-ass it, right? Oh, like, I'll just have a little bit. It won't be so bad. Like, oh, I'll just have a little bit of pizza. Oh, maybe I'll just have a little bit of cheese. Maybe I'll just do a little. And it was terrible. And I was self-sabotaging the whole time. And it was actually with a lot of encouragement from my wife where it was finally like, you, you're miserable. Why are you doing this to yourself? Like, you know what this is going to do to you. Do you have the mental fortitude and are you stubborn enough 
that when the opportunity presents itself to cheat, that you don't do it. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to get there. But honestly, I, I don't cheat. It probably drives my friends and family members crazy because I'm always like, no, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. But I'm very diligent about it. I don't self-sabotage myself because I know after, believe me, continued experience, what's the, what's the saying to do things the same over and over and over again and expect different results is the definition of madness and insanity. Yeah. So yeah. knowing how I feel after I do that stuff, I am stubborn and I will not bend on it. Mm -hmm. If I don't know and, what's in it, I won't eat it. And that, that's a, that's a very, yeah. To, to avoid things like, um, gluten, uh, grain products, and and dairies in a world that we live in yeah you just have to be because there's going to be a million friends and different people and events and parties and all that and and you you get all that peer pressure and you just have to say no thanks no thanks no thanks yep. well, everyone else is eating it around you and that is by definition of of achieving you know being extraordinary to be able to achieve things versus someone who can't because they have massive willpower or stubbornness to, to push through. And, and I think when you stick your toes over the edge enough and feel the burn, because we all, we're, we're all just little kids, we're testing the world and, and what, what we can handle in our life and what we can spend and still get by, what we can do, how fast we can drive. We're always testing until we get burnt. And this could be foods as well. So I think it's just a great, uh, it, it's, it's one of my favorite learning uh, or educational experiences with my clients where they feel better and you're laughing because I know, you know, I'm thinking the same thing and they <laughs> yeah. put their toes over the edge. It was like a party just this one time. And then they come back and their next appointment and they're feeling their heads down and they're feeling all guilty. And then they tell me they fell off the wagon for their dietary routine. And then I ask, and I keep, you know, this is, this is part of, I don't tell them it's part of the whole process. I say, well, how did that make you feel? And then they just go off on how terrible they felt for like six days, eight days, whatever, yeah. two weeks. And I'm so happy on the inside because I know that that, that was required. Yeah, I had that conversation yesterday. I actually was talking to you about this earlier when I, I had a patient yesterday that I can't do it. It's too hard. You know, you have to let me do this. And I was like, I'm not making you do anything. This is this is 100% your choice. Like I am just telling you, I'm building you a roadmap. This is how you get to a place. Whether or not you take a couple detours is <laughs> all on you. And that is your personal choice. But you know the risks. We've outlined why we're doing what we're doing. You know the risks associated with choosing to act otherwise. And you're going to have to deal with the consequences. And for some people, that works really, really well. And for some people, it doesn't. But hopefully, mm -hmm. um, with enough education and enough times where they don't feel very good, then they will develop the skills that they need to adjust for that because it was, it wasn't easy. I mean, it's, and it's not easy. Uh, most oh. people don't just go, Oh, I'm, I'm going to not do this anymore after doing it for 25 or however, 60 years, exactly. you know? So yeah. it's not easy. It is a skill you have to develop. Um, mm -hmm. so but you can do it. You can, you can, if you really have the want, the need. And I think that's, that's kind of part of the stuff and, you know, taking to the next piece, what creates that stubborn personality that we, should really all strive for to some extent. Yeah. I think that developing that or developing the, the skills to become stubborn, like one of the biggest one is, is you're going to have to learn to de delay that instant gratification. You know what I mean? Like, Oh man, that pizza will taste really, really, really good right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. But down the line, it's probably not going to be so great. So kind of having that experience, like you're saying, yeah. having that experience where you put your toes over the edge, you feel the burn, you had the problem, you, you've already been through that learning, that educational opportunity. <laughs> and, and then you take a step back and then, you know, reverse time and, or zone and zoom into the future. And there you are standing in front of, again, we're using food as, a, as, as the piece here, standing in front, looking at that food where you play it all through your mind. You already know what's going to happen. You say, no. Yep. I'm and then, do that. and you're not like, here's the thing. It's, it's that long-term, like that gra instant gratification. Yeah. It tastes really good or it felt mm. really good, whatever you're choosing to do, right? It felt really good. It feels, it tasted really good. And then weighing that against how am I going to feel, you know, in, in a three days, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And I think that you actually used a reference in one of our future or our previous podcasts where we talked about how, if you're not practicing behaviors that get you to where you want to be in two years, four years, 20 years, then you shouldn't be doing them right. If you want to feel better and that's your big goal for a year, you should be implementing strategies 
to feel better in a year. And if that, that behavior or that whatever you're doing isn't going to contribute to that in a positive way, then don't do it. That's true. Are you doing something that's going to build you up and bring you to where you want in, in a year, six months, uh, three months, three years? And if you're not doing the behaviors that are going to take you there, you're not going to get there in three months, six yep. years, whatever, whatever the different time frames. It's just not going to happen because it's it's the buildup of it. So a lot of things that that go into being, you know, uh, hopefully establishing the 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 willpower, the stubbornness, the stand, you know, holding the line staying firm to your goals and you know your dreams and it can be called stubbornness as we're using or it could be just called discipline for what we want um so how do we become stubborn what nurtures this st- maybe maybe i should ask um ask your wife about you uh, yeah. how do you become stubborn <laughs> how do you nurture colby when he's stubborn uh, i don't like it thanks thanks for asking dr glenn <laughs> um things that i i recognize in my patients that are really stubborn is is they do celebrate victories when they do something and they're like you'd be so proud of me like this weekend i went to a birthday party didn't have any birthday cake mm-hmm. awesome good job you know i think that that's a big thing so celebrating your small victories i think that analyzing our previous behaviors that got you to where you know you are right now whether that's you know whatever it is you know are you diabetic are you over slightly overweight what is it what are the behaviors that allowed you to get that way and how do you change them mm-hmm. and then don't do those behaviors anymore <laughs> yeah yeah the, a higher level of self-awareness yeah absolutely and then when you find something that works well for you look at how you did it and recreate that pattern it pattern your day after that behavior or whatever that it got you the success that you wanted and keep doing it um i think that maybe setting realistic goals i think that being stubborn i think it's easy to say like i want to do this but if you don't break it down into measurables right so if you, back back to what we said like you know we want to get somewhere in five years we want to lose an x amount of weight or fit into certain clothes in five years yeah, like that, that, that's a that's a pretty long stretch and a long right. plan. But but if um, you don't set goals from now to five, you'll I be mean, five. You could be one one month away from five years and go, oh my gosh, I haven't done anything. That's because exactly. I had no checkpoints. And then you literally lost five years. Yep. So you know, and 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 a lot of people don't like doing things. Well, you know, I'll, I'll wait a little while. What, you know, why why have a goal of five years? What if I get to it earlier? <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Awesome. That's great. <laughs> perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. So it, uh, yeah, breaking up those big, those big pieces into smaller pieces that seem attainable and, 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 uh, and keep us and celebrating it's, them it's, when you get it. Right. Yeah. Cause it's it, very hard to stay steadfast for, you know, for a, a week, never mind uh, a year, five years, or five years. Yeah. With it. And, and, uh, and it's easier when you have wind in your sails, it's easier to hold the line to keep moving through. Um, another thing that, you know, we talked about our deep belief system, our be- deep belief system and why we're doing what we're doing. The, you know, the, the solution to any, any goal, I believe, anything to achieve in life is first look, for, look from within. Our, 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 what are we doing this for? What do we want to do it for? Why, why, did, why, why is it on our radar? How is it? And it's not like, it's, it can't be something superficial because you'll never stick with it. It has to be something that hits you at the core because it's going to be tough. It, it's it's going to be tough. The distractions and and the uh, to pull you away from what you need to do to achieve your goal is going to happen every day. And when things mm-hmm. are good and you're motivated, it's going to be easier. But there's going to be a lot of times where things are going to suck, and um, it's going to be harder to. So if you have that 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 inner belief system that's that powerful, it's going to take you through the dark times. Yep, absolutely. Identify why it's important to you, and then remember that. Mm-hmm. For sure. And I think we talked a little bit about this when we did our priorities podcast, right? May have. Yeah. I can't remember. We've done quite a few. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Prioritizing your priorities. That's a, that's another one to look at in the steps of it. So um, that's all I have. Yeah, absolutely. I think this was a good one. Hopefully you guys got enjoyment out of this. If you liked the content and you liked what you heard, again, hit like and subscribe, turn on notifications because we're going to continue to roll content out. If you'd like to reach out with us, or reach out to us with any questions or comments, or maybe you have a topic idea you'd like to get our two cents on, um, feel free to reach out to us. Our email directly is info at brainstormingwiththedocs.com. You can get on our website. Mine is www.northlakeschiropractic.com. 
Dr. Glenn's is www.drgharrison.com. There's a ton of information on there. And stay tuned because we're going to continue to roll in. Uh, we're going to continue to roll out new information each and every week. All right. Until so next good. time, buddy. That sounds good. I look forward, right, buddy. Stay stubborn. I will talk to you later. <laughs> okay, bye. -bye.